Welcome to Rep Your Brand, a podcast for B2B marketers who are looking to build their career through a strong personal brand. Rep Your Brand is hosted by Nick Bennett, one of LinkedIn's top voices on field marketing and personal branding. In each episode, Nick captures stories on how to overcome the challenges marketers face with growing their brand. So if you're a marketer looking to open doors and create opportunities that you never thought were possible, then listen in to get tangible tips and strategies to build your very own personal brand. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Rep Your Brand, a podcast for B2B marketers who are looking to build their careers through a strong personal brand. I'm Nick Bennett. This podcast is brought to you by my friends at Motion. They're a done-for-you podcasting service for scrappy marketing teams and B2B tech. They're two of the nicest guys around, and the work that they do is truly world-class. You can find them at motionagency.io. And today, I'm super excited because this is someone that I've known for a while. We've rescheduled a bunch of times and it's finally happening. So our guest for today is Mark Young. He's the VP of Marketing at a brand new role, Sales Impact Academy, previously at Dooley. Mark, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Nick, and appreciate the flexibility, you know, and heading to a new role. Life is is crazy as it is and uh, classic SaaS world, right? SaaS years are like dog years. One year in SaaS is like five weeks in the real world. So uh, excited to jump into that. Absolutely. So I want to kind of kick things off because you are in a brand new role. And so I've been thinking about this. I was like, oh, this is going to be good. I can like, I can talk to him about like moving into this role. So the first question I have is, do you feel like your personal brand helped you get into your new role? Absolutely. I think without a doubt, I actually had a really funny moment recently where I was at this event here in Vancouver. It's called Product BC. And I started posting for the first time two years ago about and a few days ago now that was like the first moment when i was like i'm gonna do this i'm gonna shift from private to public i'm gonna build out loud and i'm gonna do this in the place where like i like doing my community on linkedin so i was thinking a lot about like the origin story as it were like you know you're up and coming like the comic book era of how it began uh, so the timing was really good given that kind of reflection period. But uh, yeah, your personal brand will open doors that you didn't think were possible. It is the force multiplier for your career progression. And I'm a big believer that if you build a personal brand, one, you will never have to write a cover letter for the rest of your life. And two, you will be able to create more income streams by a five to 10 X ratio than you could otherwise in an inbound way. That is like, I'm a huge believer in Anyone who works at a company where your personal brand is not encouraged to be built, red flag. I would highly recommend to those listening, that is the long-term path for success and growth, specifically in tech and beyond. Find leadership who values what you do, invests in you, and helps give you and your team the resources to scale. If you're in a fear-based culture where you're told not to post on LinkedIn and you can't represent yourself, get out of Dodge. Oh man, like I literally, that was so perfect. I didn't even like set you up for that, but like literally you broke down everything that I am passionate about. So I I had so many other ways that I was going to actually go (laughs) and start, but like, I want to kind of dig into that a little bit. So, you know, you're, you're the VP of marketing. You've been VP of marketing before. I am curious because I, I, I ask a lot of people, friends that are VPs of marketing and CMOs, I ask them this question too, not on the podcast, just in general, but like when you, you're hiring people for roles within your team, does a personal brand matter at all? It depends on what you're looking for. So I'll give you like two very, very good examples in marketing that come up a lot. Let's say that you're hiring someone in customer marketing or in community. What are two of the most important things in customer marketing and community? It's like deeply understanding your customer base, your users, the people that like live and breathe what you do, they are the best people to bring on with personal brands who are creating content, who are networking, who are having conversations because the feedback loop of what they're seeing and bringing back could be like 50x faster in terms of velocity than someone who might be more of a, a private builder. And I've seen that time and time again, and where it's You know, for example, like, you know, you connected me with the team at Alice and I spoke to, you know, one of your enablement leaders because Alice is an SAA customer and we were getting feedback on what they, how they were viewing us and the white space in the market and how we can show up. 
And a big part of that was because like, I knew you and we were friends. And as soon as I started, you know, you are one of the handful of people that I paid to have those conversations. That doesn't happen as organically. And that was an amazing conversation. And it led to some great insights that helped me now form how we're thinking about category strategy, positioning, you know, and what we're focusing on kind of 3060. The flip side is in some cases, marketers actually over index too much on personal brands for roles that might be more like technical or two good examples would be growth slash demand gen. I am a huge believer. If you can find a growth leader with a great personal brand creating content, that is an amazing channel that you can use to create demand and capture demand by all means, like index for that. Same with a head of content. Your head of content should be deeply ingrained. But if you have a very strong playbook where you're scaling an SEO play or, you know, a, an affiliate motion through partners, in some cases, bringing someone on who might be private, not has a brand, but has a great repeatable technical playbook can be the way to go. So it's not the only way, but you need to understand like what works for your business and how you scale and make sure that you don't bias to over indexing on social creatives on the team. You do need like deep analytical, usually like to round out and like diversify the, the overall balance of the org. Yeah, couldn't agree more with you. I want to talk about like your background a little bit because it's, it's, it's actually a pretty interesting background. And so I want to talk about your first corporate role as a social media consultant for George Brown College back in yes. 2015. So yes. even back then, what do you feel that social media is an important aspect of building a strong bit brand in 2015? So back then, so I was consulting with the board of directors as part of a project where I was basically really like starting to reevaluate and build their whole social program. I was tasked to build the strategic foundations and that they would then implement as part of their team. So again, that was one of the first times that I had like a board level role where I was coming and advising, you know, CEOs, founders of the company, like our, our partners were like Edie Smith, you know, the multi-million dollar jam company. And it was me early days. I was like, okay, like I've got to show up. I got to do a great job. At that time, we were still in the evolution of what I would call the like early stages of social, right? This was when Facebook was still Facebook and that there was, um, I would say like executives got shoulder tapped by their boards, strategic advisors, and a lot of, you know, the people that were more social savvy saying we are missing out on a great multiplier for culture, for retention, for reaching our customer base. And that is on social, right? You look at a lot of these older brands who aren't really deeply investing there, like they're missing out on so, so much by like, you know, thinking social is just like you put a few tweets in buffer and you're good to go and you're doing social. Like it's, it's not that. So I'm a big believer that a lot of brands have caught up who have made the investment, but it's never too late. So I look at companies now that still aren't doing social. They're not on LinkedIn. They're not really like investing in the areas because they don't see their customers as being there. And I would challenge that because a key part of winning in today's market, and it goes to why HubSpot acquired the Hustle newsletter, for those of you that might be subscribers, you need to win the hearts and minds of your audience. How do you do that? You show up where they are and you meet them on the channel that they're at and what they expect to see. And the smart brands that will win will do that. Those that don't are still going to be in the mindset of, fear-based social or, you know, my reps being on social means they're going to leave. They're going to get tapped for opportunities. But if you don't have that old school mindset, like really the world is your oyster. And if you do, I think ironically enough, your people will actually leave sooner because you won't build a culture where they feel like empowered and supported. So short question, long answer, happy to dig in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, co I completely agree with you. And like, I feel like there's, there's been so much that has changed. I mean, you know, just even think about a couple of years ago, we're in 2022, think of like two, three years ago, so much has changed. And like in your mind, even looking back 2015 to now, what has changed in the way that brands incorporate social media into their businesses today compared to, to before? Yeah, probably the biggest change has been my, my favorite evolution, which is what I call like the heyday of personal brands. Back in 2015, a company is what you knew. You knew the company, the company created content, but there was this 
I don't know, kind of like a stigma of like, we have to be professional. We have to be B2B. B2B is for business. And I think what smart brands started to realize is that people buy from people, right? At the end of the day, your company can be like your newsfeed ticker, right? It can be the information about your company, what you're doing, the exciting things. Smart brands started profiling employees, creating relationships with their team. So that way it's not just like, I know Alice, I know Nick and Alice, I know A, B, and C. Right. And that means that there is a personal connection. I'm following them, their content, their point of view. That by association becomes part of how Alice shows up in the market. That's been the biggest change in companies who get on that bandwagon are winning and companies who don't, who only think about social as a checkbox to be millennial friendly, I think are going to see massively lower growth multiples going forward, especially, you know, beyond 2022. Yeah, completely agree with you there. And I want to talk about like marketing for a SaaS brand. So, you know, I feel like a big part of it is, you know, the brand storytelling, like you were mentioning, all of that, understanding how people buy from people. What do you feel are some important elements that you feel are needed for B2B SaaS brands to include in their messaging to find success in growing their business? Yeah. So a few that I call the hills that I, I would die on. One is... <laughs> You want to be different, not better. So if any of you are, oh, what do we grab it? Because I'm rereading it today. The category design books, huge, huge fan of these. And they did a really interesting study when they published the series, which was looking at the top fortune 100 companies. And they were breaking down those that fell in different buckets. Those who were trying to be category creators, those who were trying to win the existing market, and then the hybrids in between. The growth multiple of companies trying to be different and define a new category was up to 3x the others in that Fortune 100 who were just trying to be the best or win at an existing space. And that comes down to one of my philosophies is personal brand, social company brand is one of the strongest ways that you can drive strategic narrative, category design, and focus on why you are the new way, the different way. When you make that change, you then start to see a very clear picture of how you can change the narrative in your conversations. And this could be in sales and marketing, right? A good example we'll probably what I've seen, you look at Gong. Gong is one of you know, the most well-known brands who have built out personal brands in a saturated space. There were 10 players in that space with basically the same technology, right? And you look at Chorus with a $500 million acquisition from ZoomInfo. And Gong gearing up for, you know, pre-macro climate, what could have been a $10 billion IPO. Rand is the force multiplier that set the foundation for them to be different. So they were having not conversations on like feature parity or like why A, B, and C is, you know, you know, can I get this with Chorus versus this with Gong? It was, oh, they're like, we're doing our own new thing here. It's revenue intelligence. So that's number one. Number two is that be different, have a strong stance. And it's kind of a drop down, but I like to reinforce it because my favorite analogy is what I call the wedding chicken dish. You know, you go to a wedding and you get that like medium chicken dish with potatoes and like green beans, and it's fine, but you were never going to go home and like tell your family about that chicken dish you had at that wedding. That is the same thing as having a like gray area or like medium or soft stance as a brand. My recommendation is take a strong stance believe in something, have a challenger perspective and use your social to have conversations about that. If you're just kind of finding yourself in the middle like that chicken, you're never going to build something that's going to be memorable to help you differentiate. Third is really about empowering your people and your team. So again, we talked a lot about this, but if you don't have it, build a program internally, right? Elevate your people, create ways to support and incentivize content creation, personal brands, collaboration. And use it as a sounding board. Like a great example, when I joined SIA, we were positioning ourselves as like, you know, the number one learning platform for revenue teams. And originally it was talking to a go-to-market audience, like, because we do skill development. I didn't know go-to-market was the right term for us to use. So I would go and post a poll and say, hey, revenue folks, like, how do you feel about the term go-to-market? That then sparked multiple conversations and threads. That's something that I couldn't have done if I didn't have a brand or an audience or network. And imagine what you could do with 50 people in your company helping you to do the same thing. So those are my top three. I, I mean, you honestly nailed it. And I feel like 
that last one is so important because the the people it's something I'm building right now where if you think about it, like if I can get like I drive a million views on my content per month right now. Now, if I could find, you know, 15, 20, 30 other employees, and we have some like Alexine, who's very well known on the sales side. We have a lot of employees that do enjoy building their brand as well. And if you have all these employees that are all of a sudden driving 20, 30, 40 million views um, plus a year, like think about what you would pay in ad spend for that but you're supporting your employees to build something that's even bigger, I think, right? 100%. And I mean, that's the big thing, at least for me, when I looked at where I was before two years ago and where I was today. When I first started, it feels really difficult to get started building in public. It is a vulnerable feeling. And there is not only just like the tactical of how do I do this? What should I post? What generates engagement? But there's like, a, I'm putting myself out there. It's kind of like, dating the world where everything is public, like you're in your own sitcom, essentially. And that's, I think, the most challenging aspect that I've seen from leaders, from, you know, even new new folks entering the world of social, it could be on wherever, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, newsletter, wherever you're building. The biggest thing that I've found is that it gets easier. You find systems and that the only way you can get a force multiple across what we've talked about is to build in public. Building in private is the safer, easier choice, but it is, if I made one change in my career, just in terms of like systems thinking, it would have been built in public, not in private. The biggest change that I would have made, and you just need to make sure like you're coaching your people that like it's safe, everything will be okay, you'll get there. But like good example, when I first started, my content would get 400 views, right? I'm in a kind of a similar boat to you. I got a good week. I can crack a million on a good week, you know, four to six million in like a, in most months. I haven't been posting as much recently, but like that, that took two years to happen, right? It didn't happen overnight. I mean, you have to get there in time and that, that investment compounds kind of like 1% per day. Yeah. It's huge. And like, you know, I talk about this a lot on LinkedIn myself, but like, the the revenue that one person can drive to the company organically, like I'll do a million dollars myself this year just through people because I am the ICP, like people gotcha. seeing my content, submitting an inbound demo request. How did you hear about us? I mean, I drive like two to four a week where it says like Nick Bennett, LinkedIn, Nick Bennett, LinkedIn or LinkedIn or TikTok, things like that. Like, do you believe that an organization's revenue is directly tied to the quality of personal brands that people build for themselves or a part of it? Absolutely. And the biggest thing which can lead to what I call the hamster wheel of death is the leadership mindset that's founded in that 2015 era that we talked about before. So imagine this, you have a leader who doesn't get marketing. If any of you are sitting there with a leader who doesn't get marketing, I feel for you. You know, early, very, very, very early in my career, I consulted a lot of companies that had similar challenges. And that's usually the number one thing where they just need a sounding board of, hey, like my CEO and my board, they don't get marketing. All they want are leads. And there's a misconception about what marketing does. A lot of marketing functions that you see, like performance marketing, are really sales based activities, right? If a revenue leader or a CEO wants leads, in most cases, your buyers are not ready to buy. They want to be educated. They, you want to build brand affinity. You want to have people that they are connected with such that when they are ready, they are looking at you, right? That is the biggest trap today because attribution on a dashboard is broken. It does not capture, you know, the dark social of a podcast. You sure you can capture somebody that someone actually fills out in your form field where they found you, but in most cases, that doesn't show up, right? If you look at attribution software and I see a, a demo coming through like a sign up, let's say, and maybe there wasn't a field, I would highly recommend adding a field if you don't have one, folks out there. It's like the simplest, best thing you could do to get attribution and it helps, you know, this iceberg effect because you only see the top 10%. That bottom 90% is under the water. You put that dashboard in front of an exec if it's not built the right way and they're like, oh, look at all this demand we're seeing on search. But actually, it's people who have seen your content, visited your events, listened to your podcast, who type in your name and then convert. It doesn't capture any of what's happening 
which leads to bad investments because they say, oh, like our social is not working. This isn't driving results. I'm not seeing the leads. And then you get marketers who are incentivized to make the wrong behavior, right? They're making the wrong decisions. They're then investing in lead gen and outsourced SDRs, and they're not investing in content, podcast, social. And it's probably the worst vicious loop today that exists. Leadership not gets marketing, attribution not done properly. Therefore, we must come back to doing sales activities. Marketing doesn't do marketing, and you get this spinning wheel of death. And I don't know how long it'll take for us to fix it, but it is probably the biggest problem that I see in brand and content marketing today. And I hope any leader who might be listening to this, even if they changed their thought process and started thinking differently, one person, I consider that a win for today. So if you're out there, give your team some love and make sure you understand the value of brand and content. Amazing. All right, let's shift into another piece. I think this will kind of be the last piece that we focus on before the wrap up. But, you know, I feel like creating a strategic initiative that people can get behind is one of the key pillars of building a strong foundation for a brand. But I feel like not a lot of companies are leveraging the personal brands from people across the organization to further project their messaging. Like so many companies are just like, oh, go share another work post or, you know, here's a, like, it's just, it's so robotic in the way that they do it. Like in your mind, what are ways that employees can help communicate their organization's brand better? Yeah. So I'm a big believer in this. We did this a lot when I was at Dewey. A um, few different ways, both strategically, some tactically. Strategically, think about what your mission is at that organization. What are your values as a company? What are you building towards? How do you show up? Company culture, the state of your talent and your team, and the big picture stuff that you're aligned about, why you want to work for that company are very easy things that you can help from a personal brand to talk about on social, right? You know, that is probably from a strategic lens, the area where you can focus. How does that show up tactically? So I'll give you three examples from what we did at Dooley. One, we would profile team members every week. We were called Dooligans. So we would highlight not just like them at work, but like their personal life, what they were into, their mission, their values, that type of thing. And it just gave them a form to talk about themselves. And we would tie those people with our brand. So it was like we had, you know, one of our, our engineering managers, he had a real life DeLorean that he had built, like the, the Back to the Future car. And it was sweet. And we had folks mention that in like a demo from seeing that on, on LinkedIn, right? So like it gets a fun conversation and it helps you to integrate your culture. So that's one is feature your employees at the company level and be able to talk about yourself as like, you know, a do again. That was a big thing of what we did. Second thing, integrate business campaigns with personal. So a great example was we leaned in really early at Dewey when I joined and we kind of took it from, you know, very early, like 600 plus reviews on G2 in a very short timeline where we were um, doing these really fun campaigns. So most companies, when they do like a G2 launch, like, hey, we won this award, rah, rah, here's like a stock image. We said, okay, what are some fun things we could do to integrate personal brands? So we did a campaign that we call GQG2. So like the GQ men's magazine, we literally did headshots, like magazine covers of our employees. We would take something personal about them and the company values. And it was like one of our most successful campaigns. We had like 90 people from G2, even like the CEO got or reached out and like was like, hey, like I love what you're doing. And now Dewey is featured as G2's like predominant case study of like how to build a brand and scale. So find areas like that, that you can pair business with personal brand because people want to shout out other people, give them an ability to do that. Third is find a way where your team can bring their stories to life with your business. Great example is podcasts. You're hosting this podcast. You are a person, right? That is the plane, the plane of where we are. But what does this mean? The people listening, they know Alice, they know you, there is an association, you know, Tyler um, and past folks, you know, my team at Dooley hosted podcasts. We ran events together. We created content. Even when I was hosting my live LinkedIn hot sauce sales show, right? That was content that people thought of like me and Dooley. And it helped like get us on the map with like, you know, Udi, the CMO at Gong and Sangram, co-founder of, of Terminus. And that is the type of thing where you can marry personal with business. And those would be the three things that I would focus on for a new company. Uh, that's literally, it's, it's, what I love about you is that like you give tangible stuff that like people could go implement 
tomorrow because that was always something for me. Like I, I you know, you, you think of case studies and all these things. And it's something that I'm personally working on as like from a customer marketing standpoint, like as a marketer, like I don't even really like reading case studies, but what can you do yes. to give me something tangible? Like what's that story? What's that playbook? Like how can I go implement a version of that myself? And like what you just talked about is literally the perfect way that people can think about it in their own minds. So thank you. You want one more? I will give yeah. you one more just on that line. Okay, yeah. so I'm a big believer in this. This is a hill I would die on. You have never read a bad case study. No, there are no bad case studies in the history of marketing. By default, suspicion, like antennas are up when you read case studies. Because you're never walking a case study. It was like, yeah, like adoption wasn't great. Engagement was like it was tricky, but we eventually got there to like a medium conclusion and then they churned. Like that's not going to happen. So if you have buyers, what they want is they want like the, the truth. They want the, the real deal, like the raw info. As a person building your brand, you're going to network. You're going to have conversations with people, your customers, prospects. Capture those text messages, those tweets, those emails. Build a swipe file. I'm literally building a swipe file in a folder right now. Here are the four common objections that we get. Here's 50 screenshots per folder of our customers who have the exact opposite feeling without amazing experiences. And even the ones that might be like, hey, like we had this challenge and we solved it and now it's amazing. That is one of the most powerful things that you can do and your sales team will love you for it. Love you. It's easy. What do we screenshot in a folder, put it in Slack, automate it, roll it out across the company. You will win huge points and it will be one of the defining levers that takes away from that hey, we got to spend three weeks to build a manicure case study when sometimes like four screenshots will do. Absolutely love that, man. That was so perfect. I know we're coming up on time, so I want to give you the chance to, you know, where can people go to find you? Where should people connect? You know, where should people, where should go to people learn about, you know, SIA, like all those things, whatever you want to plug, feel free. Yeah, so definitely folks, if you listen, give me your feedback, shoot me a note on LinkedIn, uh, Mark Young, J-U-N-G. Um, you can find me probably talking about some weird content or hot sauce, um, but I really chat about mostly about B2B marketing, SaaS, media arm, and the rev space. So big believer in personal brands and happy to be a resource and support. If any of you want to check out SIA, Sales Impact Academy, you can check us out at salesimpact.io. That will test the new elevator pitch. So we are the new way of upskilling revenue orgs. We're currently working with some of the fastest growing orgs on the planet. Gong, G2, Clavio, the biggest brands in the world are trusting us as this new way to upskill the rev org because really like there hasn't been one of the reasons I, I joined revenue teams in fast growth, like VC funding are just left to figure it out. It's like, oh, you've raised a hundred million dollars, go figure it out. There is no like continuous skill development or career pathing or like support to make it happen. So that's what we're solving, you know, Amazing team. If you want to learn more about it, we're hiring lots of roles. I'm looking for a great head of content. I'm looking for great customer marketers, product marketing. If you are looking for something, an exciting, fast growing company, I think we're one of the 50th fastest growing companies in the world today. Definitely shoot me a note and let's have a chat. But Nick, this has been awesome, man. Um, love chatting with you always. And we got to do this again sometime. And I don't know, six months and we'll, we'll chat all about the things tactically that I've implemented at that point. And we can try to get really deep and have the part two, if you have me back. Absolutely. Yeah, most definitely. Mark, thank you so much for joining me. Can't wait to share this episode with everyone. And we'll talk to you all soon. Thank you for listening to Rep Your Brand. Make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. And if you learned something new today, it'd be great if you left us a review. We'll catch you next time.